Welcome to Doron Yoga, everyone. Shavasana, the corpse pose, is one of the most important poses of the Yogasana. It's the place where all of our practice, our movement, our breath comes to a place of integration. In Shavasana, we're not doing much. We actually practice complete surrender, just letting the body surrender, including our breath or any other activity, including our mind. Since that's not so easy to do, Sometimes there's ways to bring our awareness a little bit back to this place, back to the place of what we're aiming for in Shavasana. That's where hands-on, that's where a little bit of touch, that's where a little bit of connection, energetic connection of student-teacher is helpful. In Shavasana, ideally, nobody's touching you, there's no music, there's nothing, and your consciousness is liberated. Realistically, for most students, that's not really happening. And so, when we come and do a Shavasana adjustment to a student, in this case, Vanessa beautifully resting in her Shavasana right now, we're going to be gentle and really try to make it more of an energetic connection rather than an interference. There are many, many things you can do, and really in Shavasana, it's a lot about you being present with the students, and however you touch will be your magic your moment. Sometimes I like to go and start with the feet. Just recognize that there's a lot of people, there are a lot of people that really do not like to be touched in their feet. So, conscious of that. I like to create length, so I lift up the ankles, create a little wiggle, and I'll do this early on in Shavasana. I will not do this when somebody is deep into Shavasana. Possibly with my thumbs, I may go to the feet and just go into the arches and create a little bit of pressure just to help release if there's any other tension. When I'm done with that, I may even just point her toes for a second. And the most important part, I'm releasing slow and carefully. You can do something similar to that with the arms, creating a little bit of length, even helping the bottom shoulder blade rotate in. You can do that on both sides, one at a time or together, and then Sometimes I like to press the heel of the hand on the heel of the hand and just press her hands down very gently, very lightly, right? Again, this is just a way to create a connection to bring that moment of presence. The most common and the most important one is even if you don't have time to do any of that, is just to focus on the shoulder. A little touch of gently pressing the shoulders down is all it takes. Another thing that sometimes feels great is taking the hands underneath the neck and pulling a little bit till you reach this place behind the head in the skull where you feel a little bit of pulling just to again create a tiny bit of length in the back of the neck, very gentle, and letting it go. Last but not least, and maybe the one I do more than anything else, is connection with her around the head area. So. Sometimes just placing the thumbs around the temples. You don't even need to massage. You can just simply place the hands there and hold. If you're very present, you'll start to feel their pulsation. You can breathe into that. You can close your eyes and maybe feel your energy, your palm, hopefully good energies going into theirs. Another variation of that is bringing the thumb above the third eye. And in this case, it may not even touch, it may hover over. If you're really focusing on your energy, you will feel that you're connecting with them and you'll start to feel the connected, the connectedness, the energy moving from you to them. You can always just press very lightly, gently, and even pull slowly as you reach towards the crown of the head, the Sahasrara Chakra, the crown chakra. If you know your student and you want to just give them a little bit of good time, you can give them a tiny bit of a little head rub. It feels good, it's nice, it's fun. Right? Again, early on in Shavasana, before they dropped too deeply. Last, sometimes I just place my hands over them, especially if there's light in the room. And I just, again, try to really focus my energies as they come through my hands. Making 
making sure you're staying present in your breathing. And over time, and for some of us it takes a breath, some of us it takes a lot longer, we'll start to feel the pulsation within our hands. And you may even feel the energy within their head. And how is it? And try to stabilize it, help it calm. I love to do a little thank you at the end because I'm appreciative of the student that showed up to class that practiced together with me, that allowed me to help in whatever way I can. And so, again, when you're doing hands-on adjustments, especially in Shavasana, I would probably not do all of what I just showed for one person unless it was a private class. But really make sure you're very present, you're doing it with care, slow, gentle, gentle touch. And remember that one thing, just this one little touch between the forehead may be all that it takes, or just one tapping on the shoulders down. That's it. Share your love with your students, even in Shavasana. Remember, preferably at the beginning, early stages of Shavasana, to help them dive deeper, and then maybe just sit and meditate with them for the rest of the time. Thank you all so much.